Ladies and gentlemen, Tactical Advance here. And welcome back to some more Star Citizens. Now today, the topic is dogfighting at PAX East. Now, like most of you, I watched the video. I sat up until, must have been gone nearly 5 o'clock in the morning, uh, watching the live stream. Was I disappointed? Did it meet my expectations? Well, I would say yeah. I think for, for me, I was, I was really pleased with how it went. On the other side of the fence, there was a couple of things that I'm sure that we all noticed that could have been improved a little bit. So let's uh, start from the top. The animations. Now the first thing I noticed was, is it's the first time we've actually seen the uh, first person view character animations. If you noticed, the hands obviously were putting the gloves on at the start, as well as the, getting into the ship and also the boots as well when you actually got inside. Now I understand obviously the third person view is not done because obviously that's got some dependency over the mocap and the other uh, aspects of it but we can actually see the first person view has been done to some uh, extent anyway with inside of them animations. And they look fantastic guys, probably one of the best hand animations I've ever seen. It's, they look really smooth, no jaggies, they look realistic, they look like real hands. I mean, you know, most sort of games you play now, even though we're moving into, you know, pretty advanced gaming now um, you still tend to see these you know these sort of blocky sort of single animated hands that just look very poor but you know 10 out of 10 that's the first thing I noticed um, and then moving on into the hangar one thing I did uh, notice uh, Chris Roberts did state that the PBR had actually been added to the actual uh, ship um, and I suppose a couple of places where I did notice it I noticed it at the top of the steps there where you looked at the metal material the sort of goldy sort of color uh, the way the light reflected on it it did look very good once again, I think the only thing that was probably going to be letting that down was the lighting in the hangar. Um, and I think once the, once the PBRs added to the hangar, I reckon the reflections and the light in the hangar will actually be a little bit improved. Um, and I think that's in some ways, you, you could really appreciate the PBR on the ship, uh, unless you're going to take one of them sort of walk around the ship sort of things. But all in all, so far, really impressed. Then I suppose the next bit obviously was um, putting on the uh, helmet. That was pretty cool. Everyone was in the audience was getting uh, quite excited about that. And with all fairness, I must admit, after it's what we went through the sort of video once and then it sort of crashed and then they crashed again, I actually sort of did want to see him put the helmet on again. I'll be honest, yeah. Um, I was pretty impressed with that. I did like it. Uh, I thought it was a really sort of nice little touch. You know, all these little things they've put in place, like putting the gloves on and putting your helmet on, all this stuff is what's making the game something other than you know, just something where you just walk up to something, press the button, and then that's it, off you go. Um, so I was really impressed with that, guys. I, I was, you know, I thought that was 10 out of 10 for that. Uh, really, really sort of pleased uh, that they thought about the sort of the finer details. The next step was obviously opening the hangar doors. Now, like any sort of person who's got some ships in their uh, hangars at the moment, I was really pleased how they animated the doors opening. I like that sort of very progressive and how it opened up in little notches. Uh, and the sound effects were very good as well, and that was that was a really good unveiling. Uh, you know, I, I thought that was brilliant. I was really pleased. I'm glad it didn't sort of just open up, like in one sort of maybe one piece or something. I don't know. I just I like the way that this, they staggered up the door for that was fantastic. Them steps from going from inside of your hangar to outside, brilliant. I mean, the only thing that I thought about, which I would have probably liked, um, is some sort of start button inside the ship. I think if the doors would have opened. And then you could have looked down and then, you know, pressed the button and then the heads up display would have powered up or something like that. That was probably the only sort of small thing I would have probably added in there. Just to add that, you know, that final touch on the whole sort of, you know, the build up to sort of going out into space. He then sort of used some of the sort of the, uh, the obviously the weaponry, some of the um, aiming target locking system. Now, a few people have been saying that they didn't really like the target locking system, and I thought actually it reminded me of Stargate the way the way that the uh, the tar the locking mechanism works, and I sort of liked it. I mean, look, what the target locking device is doing is counting down from one to five, say for instance, before it locks. Now we could have something that just is a little red circle on an enemy, and it just goes green when you've locked. We could do, you know, but what they've done is just added that extra layer of animation. I liked it. Will it impede your sort of view slightly? I don't think it will. I can't see it causing an issue. But like I said, I really liked it. Like I said, 
you know, you got to, if we want to go for a game that has got depth and it's got substance, then these small things in the game is going to what's going to make the game very good. So I'd rather them do that to start with, and then if it affects the gameplay, take it out, you know, or adjust it so it's not so impeding on on what you're actually looking at. But I really liked it. I thought it was very very good. Something else that um, he uh, sort of we saw something for the first time that I wasn't aware of actually was the actual G-force element of it. I was actually not expecting to have G-force uh, like that. Now I suppose it's fair to say in other sort of flight sims, not really space ones, but other like plane where you have, you know, you have G-force. I wasn't expecting to have G-force in space. Now, do I think that's necessarily a bad thing? No, I suppose I don't. I sort of liked it in some ways. I thought it was. I like the fact that if you're going to do it, you do it properly. I like the fact that they added the G-Force and then they said, right, well, the character's got to move. They could have just added G-Force and the character model would just sat up straight. So I like the fact that they actually you know, took the time to think, right, okay, as the different G-Force positions change, the body moves in that direction. And I think that adding that extra, there's going to be one extra layer that's going to be added to that further on down the line once the character models are fully done, which they're not, is the mocap. <laughs> when he showed me the when he showed us this sort of the g-force i just pictured if anyone's seen it on top gear when uh, jeremy clarkson goes in the aerial atom and all his face goes back like an alien uh, i'm just waiting to see if when Mo mocap goes live is, is that what we're going to look like who knows um, but I'm, I'm expecting some facial expressions you would have thought so because g-force is going to affect your face to some extent we'll have to wait and see uh, but obviously that's going to be obviously a lot later on down the line I suppose then we move on to gun sounds. Now, after sort of testing the sort of guns out in the hangar, that was one of the, I mean, sound, I, I said this before in a couple of my videos, you know, the sound in most things is very important. Now, and it's very important my channel. I make sure my, you know, my audio quality, I try to make sure the videos are put out of good quality. Now, in most films, as Chris Roberts fully aware, you can have 25% of your budget going towards audio. So I'm, in some ways, when I fired them guns in the hangar the first time, I was like, I was thinking this is not sounding too good. But at the same time, you know, I've still got faith in Chris Roberts to, you know, to identify that himself and say, look, that didn't sound quite right. I really like the, 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 the sounds of the weapons. I thought they did a really good job, particularly the Gatling gun sounded really, really good. I was really pleased with that. So brilliant on the sounds. I was, one of the other things, actually, I don't know if everyone else knows, when you're actually in space, the noise... Uh, the drone, like the, if you if you actually go and watch the video again, when he's actually in space, you get that sort of that space sort of drone sort of noise. Um, so that was quite interesting as well. Obviously, it, I think I'm looking forward to actually trying it yourself. It's one thing watching it on a screen, particularly when you're live streaming. And we've all seen these videos that have have been uploaded, and half of them are all they're a bit messy, guys. You know, the quality's not that great. You know, I want to see it in 60 frames a second and fly it myself because. That's when the detail and the immersion takes over. And I think what we're seeing on the screen is another thing from actually playing it. Now, other, one of the other things we found out as well, we, uh, Chris Roberts spoke about the uh, game modes we're going to have. So, it looks like we've got five game modes, um, which are going to be live on the Dogfight module. I'm glad, actually, that they've gone down the road of implementing the game modes for the first module. Because you could say, I mean, my expectations were, is look, you're just going to, you know, you're going to do dogfighting. Uh, you're one type of dogfighting. We're just testing, blah, blah, blah. But I like the fact that they've gone in on the basis that, here, you know, these are going to be our gaming modes. Try them all out. Um, so I was really pleased with that. So it gives us a little bit of um, flexibility on what we can actually try out when the dogfighting module goes live. Now, I suppose moving on the sort of the, not necessarily the negative side, a few people have, uh, I think the, the few people that have sort of given the presentation bad feedback i don't want to say that maybe then people are not i'm not saying they're ignorant maybe they just don't understand the journey that we've gone through to get to where we are today and the whole point of chris roberts space center star citizen is the is first of all obviously the crowdfunding aspect of it and secondly is the transparency i mean if we look at other game makers we don't i mean this is not the topic of of the uh video today but other big large game makers where you don't get any transparency in some ways i walked away from what after watching that and i i liked the the um i liked not i'm saying i like the bugs but i like the 
I like the fact that the transparency was there and it was saying that this is where we are. So you're in a position where you're looking at reality and you think to yourself, yeah, okay, so I can see what's got to be done. One, two, three, four, they've got to get them done and, you know, put the gaming modes in uh, and then we'll be ready for dogfighting. And I, I sort of appreciate that in some ways, but I suppose there's the majority, there's a minority of some people, let's just say someone who's new to Star Citizen who watched the video, I can understand and maybe they thought, oh, this looks a bit buggy and like this. But we don't have to go into that topic today. Uh, you know, explaining that dogfighting is only 10% of the whole game and, you know, anyone that's been following Star Citizens for a while or probably... I like to think that maybe on the same similar sort of wavelength and realise actually what we what was actually delivered was actually brilliant. I was really pleased with it. So what's actually left to do? I mean, from what I saw there, okay, we got three or four bugs there that need sorting out. There's a couple of little sound issues, the crashing issues. Um, but apparently after the, the demonstration had been done, the multiplayer was set up for the audience and people were playing it and they didn't have any crashes. So maybe it was just a little bit unlucky. Never mind, eh? My only criticise, the, the only criticism I would have over the PAX e show was I really, really wanted Wingman there. I mean, guys, he, you know, he's our main, other than Chris Roberts, you know, fair play, but Wingman is the guy that is talking to us on a weekly basis and I sort of wanted him on the stage being the sort of lead pres you know, the presenter with, with Chris Roberts. Um, and I think that was a little bit of a shame. That was the, that for me, out of everything I watched, that was the only thing that I thought Maybe Wingman should have been there, but I think he was there somewhere. But you, when I say been there, I mean, you know, leading the show as such with Chris Roberts and him and Chris. You know, that was the only disappointing thing for me. But apart from that, um, but like I said, that was my only sort of gripe about the whole thing, really. I wish uh, Wingman would have been on stage. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, look, I spent actually, I mean, the pa I watched the Pax East video when everyone else did, and I spent best part of a good few days thinking about this video I was going to make today. I thought about, I want it to be constructive. You know, I don't want to sort of come in and go, yeah, it's all, it's all green grass. I wanted to look at all the aspects of it and take away the good, take away the bad and identify where we are. I can't tell you exactly where we are because obviously I don't work for them, but I should imagine by looking what has to be done. Now, I didn't see the gaming modes didn't look like they were integrated. Now, maybe the people that played the multiplayer might have seen the game modes, possibly. If the game modes are already implemented, well, there's a tick for that one. To sort out the bugs and all the other issues, I reckon we're probably looking maybe for two to three weeks. Um, I think we were, they were looking for around about the first of the month. Um, so it could be two to three weeks, maybe a month. I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm sure everyone else is. Lot to look to forward to. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video today. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye now.